let's uh, predict the product here. Um, and if you want, you can save time by leaving out the mechanism. If you want, you can just try to go straight to the product. That looks good. This is another basic hydrolysis. Now we know that in a sense, the product of hydrolysis should be a carboxylic acid. However, you realize that under basic conditions, this would end up deprotonated. It's pretty conventional okay. here to show the sodium. That's not a huge deal, but that's probably how you would see it on the test. Right. Uh, and you know that this L group is going to be leaving, and it has to pick up a proton at some point in the course of leaving. But it's not going to pick up still another proton. It's not going to form an ammonium, because that's not consistent with these conditions. And I think that's exactly what you worked out. So uh, that's very good. Yeah. Didn't give you much trouble at all. Um, hmm. Now they didn't mention. Uh, and I took this out of the lecture notes. He didn't mention using heat here, but I think you would need heat for this reaction. So I think that was just he, he left that out. He did mention that he was using concentrated base, which again might be necessary because this is not very reactive. Okay, let's give a name to this compound. N N dimethyl formamide. You remember very well how to name these. We name these as two substituents, and you remember we need two N's and the prefix di. Most people forget one of those. Now, how many carbons does form indicate? Ooh, I'm sorry. Acetamide. That's right. Form always means one carbon, but acet, except for acetone, means two carbons, so we want acetamide. Uh, I guess the IUPAC name would be ethanamide, but people usually say acetamide, so this is a good name. N-N-dimethyl acetamide. That's the name. What's the name of this? You ready? Uh, Sodium ethanoate? Sodium ethanoate, that's right. However, it's more usual for people in this case to use the common name. Or sodium acetate. Right. But the suffix is eight. So I think we saw sodium acetate on the previous yeah. problem too. Now, what's the general name for this type of functional group? Just what general class does this fall into? Anamine? Yeah, this is an amine. Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Yeah, it's a secondary amine, but again, we haven't learned how to name amines yet, so we don't need to worry about that naming, but we should know it's a secondary amine. Good. Okay, here's something harder. a little trickier. We should probably go back to showing the mechanism here. Okay. So let's go through the mechanism for this reaction. And again, uh, I would think this probably would need heat, although he didn't actually mention it.
Let's stop and talk about that for a second. Okay. All right. Now let's see here. Um, what was the general name for this type of reaction? Uh, base catalyzed uh, hydrolysis. Yeah, it's another base catalyzed amide hydrolysis. The only tricky part is here we have a cyclic amide. Now you, you figured a lot of things out, but uh, you also had a problem. So let's see. We have the base attacking here. Um, it's actually that you put in some numbers. Those will probably be very helpful to us eventually. It's also good. It looks like you identified the L group. Um, so here's the L group. This is a little tricky because the L group is not going to totally leave. It's still connected by the back door, but it's going to leave from this direction. So it's really good that you're identifying the L group. Um, however, then you made a mistake that you eventually corrected. I think that at, at first you thought that this would leave immediately when the hydroxide came in. You were, you were at first showing the nitrogen already detached in this picture, but then you corrected yourself and you saw actually this hasn't detached yet. All this happened to the nucleophile has come in. All right, um, now, so this was good. Now the next step that you did is that you protonated this nitrogen using the water. Mm -hmm. The next step you did is to protonate the nitrogen to make this into a better leaving group. So you did something like this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> However, remember we're under basic conditions. And under basic conditions, we should never have a positive intermediate. This is not consistent with our conditions. Under basic conditions, we shouldn't have a positive intermediate. Everybody should be neutral or negative under basic conditions. So that's how we know that we actually should not protonate the nitrogen at this point. We shouldn't protonate the nitrogen at this point. That would give us something positive, which is not consistent with our conditions. So we should not protonate this nitrogen. Um, any other guesses about what we should do now if we're not going to protonate the nitrogen? It what should be kicked off with a negative charge. Yeah, it should just be kicked off by the negative charge. Yes. Now we can protonate. 